Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large small block land vehicle that's designed for transporting fuel long distances. And this is called the ALZ TR Behemoth, which is this lovely thing sitting right behind me. So this puts the land blocks to very good use. As you see on the bank there, we've got our lab hydrogen tanks. It's got full on interior with automatic closing doors. As soon as you get into the cockpit to drive it around, the doors will seal up and will automatically open up once you hop out. It also comes with two modular containers to fill up with whatever you need on your adventures. By default, it has ice inside it. And then on top, we do have a Gatling turret, one of our compact Gatling turrets, to give you a little bit of defense while driving around. But anyway, press the F10, find this in the menu. The TR Behemoth is 2,562 small blocks using one hell of a lot of the DLC packs. We see up to here is a transport rover designed for long range fuel transport. So we're going to give this thing a thumbs up, round towards the very front. Have a quick look around the outside. They'll go inside, have a look at that tiny interior. They'll go through the controls, drive around for a bit, and I believe that'll be that. So putting a light so and bring the slight background just a little bit. Now I have to do, and this is what we get for the very front of the ALZ TR Behemoth. So right in the very middle, what we've got is a bunch of spotlights and heat vents to line up the area in front of you with even more lights above where our windows are sitting, where we're going to be peering outside from. We also got some grey steel blocks to make up the main body of this vehicle. And then all the way down to here, what we've got are some short suspensions that have been clipped into each other to act as your bump guard. Usually people would say use truss blocks instead of this, but no, this is just a fine way of actually handling that. And the way down to here is a half hinge, so you can use this to connect up to, and we'll use it to refuel that up, refill up your batteries, and all of that without using a traditional connector. And of course we see the start of many wheels that go all the way around this thing. And onto the sides. Here we go, so we've got a little inset light right in front of us. And across the here, here's your doorway to get inside. We've got some fake ladders that come all the way up to that door, which, like I said, will automatically open and close as we were to go into the cockpit, but we can, if you really want to, manually close it up if you're not planning to drive it. Over and up to this section, we've got some blue seal blocks to come all the way down onto an inset air vent. As we move further and further across, we see even more of our blue seal blocks than the start of our lab hydrogen tanks, as well as our modular containers on the side. When we come over to this part, this is not a cargo container. This caught me off at first, because when I briefly went around the outside, I just passed this off as a warfare cargo container. No, this is a self-made thing, but behind there is an inset connector to actually dock it up. Grab my character coming all the way up to it. And opening it up. There we go, there's the connector. So you can go across to a piston system, connect up to it, and well, that is how you handle that. And we'll leave that open for the moment, continuing all the way along. There's your other lab hydrogen tank. Then returning all the way up and going back to where we started, then you've got this section up and above. Being angled by a hinge, this is a small little, well, storage rack, where you can see we've got a bunch of different stuff going on. We've got pro tape batteries, we've got small car containers, small auction tanks, a little thing in here which is like a small little briefcase, iron thrusters, and then a spotlight with a second one on top of it. So we've got that for some decoration. There's a slightly different set on the opposite side, so coming all the way around, over to here, and there we are. So we've got some columns with a road head on top, all the way across here, some spare wheels, and then we've got some gas cans. That's that on this side. Guess we'll get a proper look on that side in just a moment. What I want to do is come back around towards the very back, because this is what we get. So right at the very back, what we've got is a ladder to be able to hop up, get on top of this thing, do maintenance work, and of course to check on your turret. We also very clearly see the back of our lab hydrogen tanks in all of their glory, as well as the blue steel blocks which have been slightly angled for those weird little cargo racks on top. They've also got some interior lights, two black ones, which I presume is going to be your indicators, then two red ones, adding your brake lights. All the way down here, same theme as the front, we've got a bunch of suspensions clipped into each other. Then all the way down here, exactly the same as the front there, we've then got another half hinge to connect up to something if you need to, as well as two atmospheric thrusters to help boost this thing forwards. All the way up, onto the side, here we go. Yes, we see all of our wheels. We also got that weird fake container thing right in the middle once again, all the way across. There we go, another modular container down there. And there's another doorway to get up inside. Moving all the way up, coming across the top here. There we are, so on top of the front, we've got two windows pierced straight up. And we've got a decorative bear cap, a rotating light, a spare wheel which has been clamped down by some barred windows, and an upside down piston head. And all the way across, pulling away slightly more. Two exhaust blocks that were shooting out smoke, but I disabled that, just for this showcase. Beacon right behind there. One of two solar panels with a bunch of scaffolding blocks with a letter C on top of them, adding a small clamp. 
And across to here, here it's your Gatling turret for Breed of Defense, another solar panel with the exact same setup, and then there it's your ladder at the very back to climb on top of it. Moving all the way down underneath it, here we go, just go and have a look at this as a whole. And there we are, so we clearly see our absolute thrusters at the back there, just boosting forwards. We then see our wheel suspensions have been connected up, as well as a massive column that goes all the way along the middle. Then onto this section below are more sugar containers, where they've got, once again, like the side, access panels to open up and put stuff inside if we need to. There's also a camera there, so you can get a good view of what's going on below you. I suppose I'll just grab hold my character once again, scoot underneath here, and if I can, open up this, and there we are. So we can just access that, there's the ice, and we just close up once we're done. As for that, that's pretty much it for the outside of the ALZ TR Behemoth. It looks bloody fantastic it has been set, it's an absolute glorious design, and like I said at the very start, puts the new lap blocks to very good use. I believe it is time for me to grab on my character and hop up and go inside. So all the way up to here in the open door, there we go, can, like I said, manually close them up if you need to, but they will automatically close up when you get into the seat, so into here, and there we are, hopping out, open up automatically. And anyway, at the very back here we've got ourselves a little bed to go to sleep on, we've got a little TV up there with something that I do recognise, but can't quite put my finger on it. Yes, that's our TV to watch some shows, we've got a bump panel to actually control it, so we press number two to turn it off, and then we've got number one to turn the lights up there, on off as well. Right behind there we then got a kitchen blog, so we've got a microwave up there, coffee machine down there, which is very lazy and very easy to access while we're in bed. But anyway, turning around towards the very front, there we go. So down there's our custom weapon controller, strip of hazard skin, and then got a passenger seat with nothing much going on, hopping to this, looking around, down there's our plushies, down to there's a little module block, and to the opposite side, programmable block showing us our radar. Hopping out of this and actually getting into the proper seat here, there we go. And looking around on this side, so down there we see a lot of stuff going on, that looks like a very fancy artificial horizon, but we can also see our power and hydrogen usage, down to there's your atmospheric gravity, your target locked, and then your weather on the very side. Looking all the way up and around, there we are, and of course there is a compass up there if you need it. Then I bring out the HUD, these are the only controls we get. So yes, not too much actually going on with this thing, so I suppose I will start on tab number 2, which can be for your hydrogen tanks and auction tanks to stop power on and off. Come back to tab number 1, on to number 9, just for your turret on top to manually control it. There we go. Popping out of this, the final one for your wheels, which come with the 3 wheels at the back, or the 6 wheels at the back there, to make them steer on and off. So by default, only the front wheels will steer, which will cause us to have quite a large turning circle. But if, for whatever reason, we need to have a much tighter turning circle, we can activate them, and then there we are. So for a demonstration, undo the parking brakes, and starting to turn this thing around. There we are with them turned off. So it's quite a big turning circle. Then come to a stop. Activating them. Doing it one more time. And there we are. That's a very, very tight turning circle. To the point that we might start to skid around for our eyes. And if we get too fast, it will start to tip over. Of course, we don't need to worry about that. I can just turn them off. Because that is pretty much it for this vehicle. All it has to offer. So the only thing to do now is to drive around on Planet Pertam to see how it handles high speeds. So moving forwards, here we go. And as you can see, it does take quite some time to get up to speed, but that's also being assisted by some amateur thrusters. So yes, it will take a little bit of time to go up to 100 meters per second, but you may not want to do that depending on which planet you're on, because it might very easy destroy the vehicle. So here we go, now up to 62, 63, it's struggling quite a bit, that looks like a cliff edge. But luckily, we do have gyroscope controls on this vehicle, so we can control it, and... There we go, we can try and save this thing, but it is quite bouncy, hopefully this will land on its feet. Hopefully the self-writing script will kick in. There we go, we're now self-writers. And now we just go off on our merry way. So yes, that's a very handy thing to have built into this thing. Very handy thing to have on a lot of vehicles. Because sometimes it can be a bit too difficult to actually flip a vehicle over manually. And sometimes you can make things hell of a lot worse by, say, digging a deep hole. And while just having it sink all the way through, making it a lot more difficult to actually get it out. No, this thing seems to be very, very stable, and with block destruction turned off in this world, it has no issues whatsoever about landing on its roof, which is self run itself, and just get you off on its venture. But it does seem to cap out about 63 meters per second, seems to be about as fast as it can go. If you strapped on a few more thrusters, of course it can go much higher. But as it stands, it's a fantastic vehicle, a fantastic speedy transport vehicle to use in your world. So be leading to the description below to which you download the plan right yourself, highly recommend you do, and I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.